Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Omega Seamaster Professional 300 meter diver you can see and you can purchase this Omega chronometer grade 300 meter dive watch on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see this iridescent lacquered blue dial Omega dive watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this extraordinary Omega Diver. Now this was one of the coolest millennial era watches. Right around the year 2000, there weren't too many watches at any price point that could outglam this fantastic 41 and a half millimeter steel dive watch. Now it's not too exuberant after all, we're not talking about gem setting or colored gold, but the combination of that mirror polished bezel and again the iridescent lacquered Omega Wave dial made this one of the punchiest visuals at any price. And to this day, it retains that same distinction. It's also a very wearable watch. Now, I do own an Omega of this generation from the Seamaster Professional 300 meter family. I have the conventional bond. This one's a little bit more fabulous than mine, but the measurements are the same. 41.5 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the helium escape valve or the crown and crown guards. The watch is fairly slim, all things considered 12 millimeters thick, 47.5 millimeters lug to lug if you want to put it on a strap, but on the bracelet as provided. The watch has a horizontal distance across the wrist of a more contemporary 52.5 millimeters, but as you can see, I wear it with ease even on the bracelet. I would say you could wear this watch with ease on the bracelet down to a wrist size as small as 13.5 centimeters in circumference and on a strap down to 13. Now it is hefty, it's solid. During this period, Omega bracelets and clasps were generally superior to those of Rolex. So add the solid case back and what was considered one of the best bracelets and clasps of the time and you get a hefty watch on the wrist even today. Now you can see we are talking about a different era of Omega with pins and sleeves used for sizing the removable links. Nevertheless, the finish of the bracelet is handsome. I'll remove it and show you some detail. You can see this is a little bit more burly in profile than the multi-link James Bond style bracelet. Three links here with alternating polished and satin surfaces. You can see the polished outer flank. It's handsome if a bit more Rolex oyster than the original Bond bracelet, but tough no doubt. Now this watch features the same clasp as mine, fully milled out, very secure. Impressive in its construction back then, this is considered to be the clasp that generally forced Rolex to reconsider its clasp quality and solidity. Rolex very quickly in a single generation of dive watches went from stamped to milled clasps during the mid 2000s and right here is the reason why. Twin trigger release, no clamshells, that's the way I like to see it. Even then this was upscale and impressive for the watch's price point. It remains quite solid with excellent tolerances today and this dive extension still remains one of the best. You can see it's milled from individual pieces just like the clasp and when it closes, again, the tolerances remain quite crisp, very secure. You don't need to be a diver to enjoy it either, as I often used the extension over thick winter coats and sweaters in New Hampshire. Now you'll note the case is handsome, perhaps a little bit more delicate in design than a Submariner. You can see the polished bevel and the satin flank, as well as a relatively low profile for the bezel itself. It's individual recesses for gaining purchase are perhaps a little too refined and subtle, as this is not the easiest bezel to budge with gloves or wet hands, but it moves along with a satisfying detent. You can hear it, you can feel it. Once it's moving along, it's very satisfying and it feels quite solid all of a piece. Now you line up with the broadsword style, minute hand, and now you have a zero to 60 timer. The original Bond Seamaster featured elegant but somewhat indistinct skeleton hands that were handsome in the light but very difficult to read at night with a minimum of luminova. Here no such problem. Uh, this dial seems to have two to three times the amount of luminova as the original Bond watch and you could see to good effect even the contrast in direct light makes it easier to read. Now with the dive bezel you line up with the minute hand. Now you've got an impromptu zero to sixty minute timer and again it does not have to be used for diving. I used to use it to time the interval remaining before the end of tests. Now the dial does have that spectacular omega blue wave of the time, but not in the matte blue that was famous on the Bond. This one features that texture underneath a translucent gloss blue enamel that is anywhere between a sort of 
lightish cobalt to a downright electrifying iridescent blue. It is spectacular in any light, but it really explodes and excites in the sun. The watch features an Omega Caliber 1120 inside, 23 joules. It was a little bit of a hot rodded 2892A2 in chronometer, guys. So a COSC chronometer, but whereas the standard 2892A2 was a 21 joule movement, this one featured an uprated winding system that was both more efficient and thus faster to wind and blessed with a slightly longer power reserve of 44 versus 42 hours on the standard 2892. It's a tough movement and I can vouch for that having crashed one on a bicycle and it does feature hacking seconds when you pull the crown, stop the balance, hold the seconds hand, synchronize to a reference time, and a quick set for the date. The watch manages to be slim because the basic movement is slim and it oscillates at 28,800 vibrations per hour. 300 meter water resistance with a screw down crown. You also have a helium escape valve. So saturation divers and you know who you are. You're equipped if necessary. Uh, the rest of us, it's just a cool conversation piece. And hey, in GoldenEye, Bond had a grenade stored in that little pin slot. So once again, a talking point, a conversation starter, and luxury being more than you need. This helium escape valve certainly qualifies. A handsome watch, one of the most memorable from a great era in Omega dive watch design, and anything but the standard Bond. This is for one who loves the basic model, but wishes to stand apart. See it and own it on our website.